taking a look at the new slide on over maze die. This die can be oriented side to side or up and down, and if you turn it, you can get four different designs out of this one die. This die makes great roads or trails. You can use it as a slider or a shaker. It can be a lot of different things, and a lot of different images can move on this maze. There's even some images coming up in the summer that will work great with this die. So for my first card today, I'm recreating a card made by Grace. And I'm just gonna cut this from some white cardstock cut with a stitched rectangle. And you can see there that you can slide a piece of colored paper behind it, or you could use the part that's cut out as well. You could cut that from some colored paper and get a cool look. For Grace's card, I'm using some really rainbow paper. And I've cut it to be the size of a standard size card. So I'm just going to put that piece of paper onto my card base. And this is going to go behind my maze cutout. I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment on the front of this panel. And then I'm going to be putting foam adhesive all on the back. Grace's original card is actually a shaker card. So you can put foam adhesive around and make sort of a pocket for shaker pieces to stay in and put acetate on the back of this piece. And it has a really cool look with all those pieces inside these trails that this die cuts. I'm just doing a plain card today, but I'm adding the foam so that this is popped up from the background and has some dimension where those roads are. I'm just going to center that up, and so I've cut this with the rectangle that's slightly smaller, and so I've got a nice rainbow border as well as the rainbow roads. I'm finishing off my sentiment by doing some heat embossing on some black cardstock with some white embossing powder here, and this is just the first part of the sentiment that says thank you. So I stamped it in clear ink on a piece of black cardstock, and I'm just using my heating tool to heat that up. And once I've got it nice and melted, I'm just going to use my paper trimmer to trim it down to a black square right around that sentiment. I'm going to use some thin foam adhesive squares to pop that sentiment up. And I'm letting that go across the roads or the maze that is cut here. This particular card is not a slider card, so it's okay that I'm covering up these little spaces. Grace had a really cool idea. She used the clouds from the Village Hero set and colored them green like trees and tucked them behind her buildings to look like greenery and bushes. So that's what you see there behind that hospital. And I have another piece that'll be the same way behind the police station. But I thought that was a really clever idea and another way to kind of stretch the stamps and not have to worry about finding trees in other sets. You could kind of fake it with the clouds as bushes or trees behind buildings. Here's another one. I used the little one here to kind of create a bush in front of the police station. And now this card is all finished. For the next card I'm making in this video, I am going to be making a slider card, but I did some really nice inked backgrounds to start with. So I'm going to be using the hillside border stencils and I've got a stitched rectangle panel here and this is going to be the front of my card. This is the piece that I'm going to cut the maze out of. I'm just using some distress inks in blueprint sketch, salty ocean, and peacock feathers. And I'm just going to go back and forth between the colors and create a wave background because I'm going to be making an underwater scene for this slider card. I'm just holding my hillside in place with my fingers and I actually started using tape because I was having a little trouble holding it on the paper. And I started with blueprint sketch. Now I'm going in with salty ocean and I'm going to do the bottom. And then you'll see as I start to add the different layers, I'm going to use the different curves of the hillside borders and I'm going to make these colors overlap. So this is going to get nice and saturated with all these pretty blue colors and create a really cool ocean background. I'm just working my way up from the bottom and just crossing those colors and those waves. You can see there I have a little bit of white in the middle, but I'm going to use a dip in the stencil here and I'm going to cover that up with another color. Once I'm done with all this, I can always go back in with the inks and kind of fill in any white spaces that might be left behind.
And then once I'm done, I'm just going to go in and make sure the edges are nice and inked. And it kind of defines the edges of this panel. Finally, I'm going to flick some white metallic watercolor. I just think this adds some nice texture to it. And it being that bright white and metallic, it kind of looks like bubbles in the water to me. So once I get this looking the way I want it, I'm just going to set that aside and make sure everything is nice and dry before I cut the maze out of this. Now I'm going to work on the piece that's going to go behind it, so behind the maze. And what I thought I would do is do the same sort of technique, even though you're not going to see a lot of this, with some different colors. So for this one, what I'm doing is I'm going in with the Twisted Citron Distress Ink. And I'm using the other hillside border, the one that's more of a simple curve. And I'm just going to cover the whole background with different lines of this Twisted Citron. So it took me a little while because this is a lighter color. So I did a lot of blending to get it nice and saturated like this. But what I'm going to do is keep using the same stencil. And I'm just going to move it down. But I'm going to do the same color. So unlike the front of the card... I'm using the same ink to go all the way and fill this whole background. I'm not actually not overlapping it either because what I'm going to do after I have this filled with the green is I'm going to go in with the peacock feathers and I'm going to go overlap this a little bit. So it's kind of got a different look than what I did on the front, but it turned out really cool in the end. I kind of want to make another background like this and not cover it up so much because a lot of this got covered up by the panel that goes on the front. You're only going to see this through the maze, so it was actually a lot of work for <laughs> only seeing a little bit, but it was really fun to play and I really want to make a background like this again. So now once I've got all that Twisted Citron on there, I'm going to go in with the other curved hillside stencil and I'm going to use the peacock feathers. And I'm actually going to only add a little bit. I'm not going to use a lot of this, but I'm just making some lines that crisscross over the lines that I've already created. So you can see just with a little bit of ink that I put down, you can see that line of the hillside and how it crisscrosses over the lines of the Twisted Citron that I made. And you get this cool wavy look. I'm going to work my way all the way down this panel so that it's consistent all the way across. And I'm using my tape to hold my stencil in place. So once I get this last little wave done here at the bottom, then I'll just go in and make sure that the bottom edge is inked up. So that the color is sort of consistent across the whole background. And then I can go in and do the same to the top. Now I wanted to give this a little bit of texture just like I did the front, but I didn't want the metallic. So I'm actually going in with a really dark green watercolor paint and just adding some flex to that. So it matches the green colors that I used for the inking background. So now that that's done and dry, I'm going to add that to my card base. And like I said, this is going to be the background that's behind the maze cutout. So a lot of this is going to get covered up, but look how cool that background is. I definitely need to make another one of these. And then I'm going to take the maze die and I'm going to cut that from that other panel that I inked. So I'm just going to hold that in place where I want it with a little bit of washi tape. And then when I run it through the die cut machine, look at this cool look with those two inked panels layered one on top of the other. I actually have that cut out piece that I could use for a project because it's really cool as well. But another idea for a slider card is you could take that piece and once you have that front panel up on some foam, you could pop this into that opening and it would look like a seamless panel even though you have this maze that you could run a slider through. 
So now I'm going to work on the slider part of my card and I've actually got, I'm using a dime again instead of a penny. Um, and I'm just sort of marking how wide that is on all the trails as I go by for myself because there's a lot of trails on this one so you want to make sure that your washer or your penny or your dime has enough room to slide. And then I'm going to take my foam tape and I've just cut a long piece here and I'm cutting it down the center so it's thinner so that I can put these long pieces across the top and the bottom but they're not so wide that they're going to get in the way of my slider. So you can see that I have that above that pencil line that I sort of sketched there. I can also take this other piece and I can cut it into smaller strips and fit it into these holes inside this maze where it goes in and out. And then once I've got all that in place, I'm just going to check and make sure that my little dime has enough room to move around. So I'm only using one layer of foam tape on the back of this panel because that was enough for my dime to move around. But if you're using something thicker like a penny or a washer, you may want to have two layers of that foam tape. I'm just going to drop that dime in there. I've already got a piece of foam on it and I actually put two pieces, two layers of foam on the dime so that the fish I'm going to put on this pops up a little bit more. And I dropped it in there and it's kind of, I've left it sort of in the place where it needs to be to be in one of those slots. And then I'm going to pull off all that liner tape on the back of all my foam. I'm going to leave that dime right where I left it. And it's going to fit in that slot pretty easily. And then I can line up this whole panel with the whole front of the card. And then I can double check to make sure my dime's got room to move around in there. So to finish off my underwater scene, I'm using images from the You Are Sublime stamp set and I've already colored and cut all of those out and I have an idea of the placement I want for them. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting all those down. But first I'm going to start with the little fish that goes onto my slider. And like I said, I put two layers of that foam so that he is popped up just a little bit more and has plenty of room to move. I do like the idea of these images kind of overlapping the ends of each of these little trails so it kind of just looks like it goes off and you don't know where the end of it is. I tried to color all my images in some very colorful colors and I steered clear of too many greens and blues because I knew I would have a lot of that for my background. I went with a lot of warm colors and I'm just gluing all these things down pretty flat. I used some thin foam adhesives for the rocks so they popped up just a little bit but you want to make sure that you don't pop any of this up too much especially if it's really close to the lines of this cutout maze you want to have room for whatever it is that's sliding around to slide and not bump into anything so that's partly why I put my fish on two pieces of foam so it would be above all of the things around it then since the front of this card is very, very full, I decided the sentiment obviously has to go on the inside. I didn't want to try and squeeze this in somewhere on the front because I really liked the way it turned out. And then this little fish is just going to swim around. And I actually like that he kind of spins a little bit so he can go upside down if you want him to, which is kind of fun. And he can turn, but he just slides right around in that slot perfectly. Now for some cards by the design team. Elise created this fun card where she has multiple vehicles sliding around on the roads and I love the grassy stenciled background that she created. Tammy took the village stamps and then paired it with the car critters which I think is super fun. I love that big car down in the corner. Elise cut out a plaid maze to go with her amazing punny sentiment on this card. And then Kara created a cute little polka dot road for her village heroes. And I love the happy birthday translation. Elise made this card using swan soiree. Those swans slide around and they come together in the center, which I think is so cute. Megan's card is actually a fun maze card. So she put those little balls in there and you use it like you use a maze toy, which I think is super fun. Here's Grace's card that inspired the card I made in today's video. I love those rainbow roads. 
And then here's another look at my underwater card that I created with all that fun stenciling and that cute little fish swimming around. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.